Look at the optics of the Ohio governor. This went down at the White House today. Ohio Governor John Kasich, a Republican, standing at the podium of the President of the United States. How did one of Donald Trump's biggest primary contenders, rivals, get there? Well, President Obama invited him, along with other big business leaders and elected officials there, to talk trade. Former Treasury Secretary Hank Paulson, billionaire former New York City Mayor Michael Bloomberg, IBM CEO Virginia Rometty, all on hand for one of the president's final chances to push his bipartisan pitch on the TPP, the Trans-Pacific Partnership Trade Deal. Now, with this being one of President Obama's priorities before leaving the office, will he be able to get the deal to a vote? And if so, would it be able to pass by at least the election November or perhaps right after. Let's bring in former United States Trade Representative Ambassador Ron Kirk, who is with me now in a Fox Business exclusive. Uh, Ambassador, we have viewers right now who are workers, who are CEOs, and who are politicians wondering, uh, does it get before a vote, before the election, or certainly right after? Well, Liz, I certainly hope so. And thank you for giving me a chance to come back on with you again. Uh, and what we saw today in Washington with the president and the group that you just referenced is the way we've always advanced trade. And I will say this as a former mayor, mayors and governors, governors live in a world in which we talk about jobs. We don't talk about economic esoteric terms. And most big city mayors in America, Democrat or Republican, understand the importance and the value to our communities, to our ability to create jobs where we, where we live and work by being engaged in the world. And that's what this trade agreement is all about. And in particular, this Trans-Pacific Partnership gives us access to the fastest growing market in the world. And in a slow economy, the one thing Americans should embrace, the words made in America are still the most treasured brand in the world. And it just makes good economic sense for us to go out and sell to the 95% of the world's population that doesn't live in the United States. So I wasn't surprised to see such an impressive group there today. And I hope your listeners will understand that even in the midst of our economic uh, anxiety, one of the drivers of our economic recovery has been the fact that we have been exporting more to the rest of the world. Well, it makes we can good show economic some of those sense. Numbers. Uh, I'm glad you brought that up. Uh, we, we export a lot to Mexico. They import, but we export about 235 billion, make it 236 billion back in 2015. First six months of this year, uh, we have uh, already exported, I believe, about 132 billion. So they're buying our stuff, we're buying theirs. Uh, it's a little bit less balanced in China, but China is more of a growing consumer nation at this point. So maybe the belief is that there will be more. Here's the complaint, Ron, about the TPP and other trade deals. We lose jobs here in America, and, and it's a fact, because there are a lot of job imbalances sometimes. I mean, the, the famous one, at least recently, is Carrier, the air conditioning company, which Donald Trump has talked about. They took about 1,400 jobs away from the state of Indiana. In fact, uh, the vice presidential but, but, but candidate, Liz, hold I on, mean, hold on, because I want you to respond to what he said on Fox Business uh, just the other day. Mike Pence um, articulated what he was told by the CEO of Carrier. Listen, and then you can respond. I had the folks in my office that run that company, uh, and they told me that part of it was that all of their competitors were already in Mexico. All the competitors were already in Mexico, so they had to go because labor's cheaper. What do we do about that? Look, I can't, I can't speak to Carrier's example. Uh, but, you know, but part of our challenge for those of us that believe in trade, it's so easy to focus on that one business that says we're going to Mexico. We never focus on the fact that Mercedes-Benz is building all of their M-Class production here in the United States now. Yeah. All of the BMW X-Series are made here in the United States. Toyota is building trucks in my home state of Texas. This is a two-way street, and manufacturers tend to make stuff where they're going to sell them. I think if you look on balance, uh, it is unquestionable and questionable that our economy is stronger when we engage with the world, and that means we want to sell them things hurt the and not just be the world's largest consumer. We don't want and, to hurt the U.S. consumer by preventing them from buying less expensive goods that were made overseas, but hopefully, Ambassador, we can deal with this. I just find it ironic that this is the one thing 
perhaps that both candidates agree on. Hillary says she doesn't like TPP, and Donald Trump really hates it. Um, so we'll see what well, happens. Well, this, this is one place where I disagree vehemently with both of with them. Both of them. And the one thing we need, and, and 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 I appreciate you bringing me on your show, is there. Look, there is a huge economic anxiety out there, particularly among middle class Americans. But the reality, most of the jobs lost in manufacturing in this country over the last 30 years have been due to automation on the factory floor and robotics, not trade. Okay. But it's a whole lot easier to blame it on trade and everybody thinks that's a dirty world. But we don't want to live gotcha. in a country in which America sticks its head in the sand and ignores the hard reality that 95% of our the world's consumers now live somewhere else. We want to go out for and compete and win that business. And these are people that want to buy what we make. And with respect to Mr. Trump, if it's good enough for him, it's good enough for us. There's a reason Donald Trump is building projects in India and China and all around the world. And we've already highlighted the fact that none of his clothes are made here. So if it's good for him, it ought to be good for every other small business that has a product that they want to share with consumers around the world. And the way okay. we access those markets is by negotiating smart, tough trade agreements like the Trans-Pacific well, Partnership. Yes, we've got to be smart and tough. Ron Kirk, thank you very much. He's the former U.S. Trade Representative.